you would like to know what it's like to be retired in 2020. And of course, it's now official that I'm retired because... Because Norm's just had his birthday and he turns 65. So we thought that we'd just give you an update and tell you that it, retirement hasn't been as scary as what we thought it was going to be when we were still at work. It seemed like a huge step to take, didn't it? Yeah, yeah it did. Yeah. We were quite worried as to would we be able to do it? Would we be able to handle everything? Would we have enough money? Well, yeah, that was one of the biggest things, wasn't it? The vision of running out of money, I think. And also whether our money would last our retirement. That's very true. But we're finding out a lot of things, aren't we? We are. The, the thing that we didn't fully research while we were working, because we've never had government money, we've never had government programs, never, never been unemployed, never... The, the only government programs we ever got were child benefit when, right. we, when our children Ch were smaller. Yeah. So we didn't really factor into what the government money, uh, how that would impact our retirement finances. So we were just content to provide for ourselves, as we always have done. Yes, we, we weren't really aware of the availability. We knew we'd get CPP, but we didn't know about the, the OAS or the GIS. And that's come as a very pleasant surprise, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. <laughs> Almost like a birthday present. So one of the first things that we had to make a decision about was CPP. And we should really clarify that's the Canadian Pension Plan. And it is compulsory for all employees and employers and self-employed people to pay into. And from an employee point of view, I'm rounding the figures just to be convenient. It's 5%. In reality, it's slightly over that. But 5% of your pay after $3,000 goes to the government for the CPP. The employer has to pay the same. If you're self-employed, you have to pay both parts, which is 10%. So that's your money that uh, the government has. So one of our first dilemmas was, do we take it early or not? Yeah, because in Canada, although the official age is 65, you can actually take the pension at 60. You, you can, that's one of the big uh, benefits of being in Canada. And we also believe that in the US, um, with your social security, you can take that at 60 as well, if you want to do that. So we studied uh, the pros and cons of taking the money early and not the money early. Yeah, we so we came up with a little scenario, little story, we love stories. That's why we're YouTubers. <laughs> so we would thought, didn't we, that we would pretend that we both did the same job. Well, in reality, we did. Right. So, I, I so for this good. example, Tina and I are doing the same job, earning the same money at work, making our contributions to CPP, and we get to the age of 60. So... Me, being the impulsive character, says, show me the money, now. So I took CPP early. And me, being a little bit more conservative, thought, oh, no, I want to get more money, so I'll wait till I'm 65, then I'm going to get more money than Norm. So to put this into <laughs> perspective, the amount of money I'm receiving from the government from drawing it at 60 is enough for a car pay. Oh, I've already been to the Hyundai dealership, bought my car, and have it fully paid off before Tina ever draws one penny of CPP. So it's 65. So now I start to take my money. But you know, Norm, because I've waited, I should be getting more money than you. Well, you are, but I've still got the car. Yeah, that, oh yeah, that's true, and you've been driving around and I've been taking the bus. So I've been enjoying my five years of government money, which was my money to start with. And now I'm only just starting to get it. So what Tina doesn't realise is 
she's now going to have to go for another nine years until you're 74 to break even with the amount of money that I've had. And so at 74, wow. Tina now will start pulling away from me substantially in her government CPP payment. But of course, the other thing, which is quite a surprise for me, and the other thing that you have to really um, put into this is that health-wise, a lot of people might not even get to 74. Well, there is that. There's, there, there's a lot of us who've had uh, chronic illnesses and mm -hmm. there are lifestyle diseases going around. Um, so it's, it's more difficult to say that your grandparents lived till they were 90. Our lifestyle is substantially different to our grandparents. Absolutely. And I guess we're all eating a lot more processed food and things like that, aren't we? That's right. So it's, there's no guarantee to, to longevity. So that once Tina gets to 74, we've now broken even. And Tina's going to be getting around 40% more money than me. But there is one curiosity that happens as you age. And that, and that is, you don't really spend the money and you don't need as much stuff as when you were younger. No, we've seen uh, Statistics Canada mm -hmm. research done on the population as it ages in Canada. And this is also reflected in the US and in some other Western countries. The older you get, the less you consume. It, it's a graph that starts going down. But the CPP payment rewards you for waiting. So as your consuming is going down, your money is going up. So it would seem that wouldn't the money be more useful when you were younger? Um, well, I think after hearing all this, absolutely, I fully agree that we think you should take it earlier while you're 60 and enjoy it. We do. And so the CPP was just one element of the government money that we have. But all in all, we may be more fortunate than, than others. We're husband and wife. We had joint incomes. We both worked. We're on the receiving end in excess of $2,000 a month from the Canadian government. And I still have a small pension in the UK, which I'll be able to claim when I'm 67. 67, Because yes. I worked between the ages of 18 and 38 in, in the UK as a British citizen. So that would be like another birthday present, it Norm. Will. <laughs> I like this. Every time Norm has his big birthdays, we get more money. <laughs> so the, the government money is paying all of our standing expenses. Yeah. And we haven't dipped into any of our savings that, that we've had. Which we would then use if we want to travel and discretionary spending. So on but top of the 2000, we, ha we have our stock photography business that we've worked on for 15 years. Yeah. So we're doing well. The government money is, is really giving us a big lift, which was totally unexpected when we were at work thinking about retirement. Yeah, I, th I think it might have made it easier for us thinking it wasn't this big scary thing if we'd have known more about what we would actually get. So it would have taken a lot yeah. of that initial fear away, like being on the, the, the top diving board or the swimming pool and thinking, <laughs> well, it's so a long way down. <laughs> Whereas if we'd have gone off one and lower down, it would have been softer because you know that there was all this extra money coming. There is. Um, so that's why we wanted to share our story with you. Because it was a big decision for us. We, it was. You know, it was kind of a flip of the coin, but the more we researched it, the more we decided that we would take the money early because there's no guarantees in the future. And we thought um, telling what had happened to us might help other people. Yeah, put a more human face on it rather than just 
Right. Listen to financial advisors with all the money and statistics, life hey, expectancy. Yeah. So we'd like to close by saying thank you for watching. We've never done this before, but we hear other people doing it. So if you feel as though you like what you see with our videos, please subscribe and press the like button and ring that bell and then you get notified of all our future content. We are a travel retirement channel. Uh, doing lifestyle, so we will be doing retirement planning ideas and travel, and this is who we are. This is, and we hope that everybody is staying safe and keeping well during these strange times. We do indeed. So um, thanks for watching, yeah. and stay safe. Yeah, and have a great rest of the week and weekend, and we look forward to seeing you on our next one. Goodbye. Goodbye.